This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I model a braided carpet using ZBrush? So this question was sent along with an image, and here we have the image here. And the image is of a braided carpet design. So it's a braid that has then been spiraled to create a carpet. Now there are quite a few ways you could generate this design inside of ZBrush. For this tutorial, we're going to use a primitive 3D object. We're going to modify that primitive 3D. We're then going to generate a curve and then apply an IMM brush to that curve. So to start off, let's just go over to ZBrush here and I just have a poly mesh 3D star loaded in and I am in edit mode. So the first thing I wanna do is select a primitive 3D object. So I'm gonna to go to the tool palette over here. I'm just gonna click on one of the loaded tools here, which will open up this menu. And I wanna locate the spiral 3D primitive. Now any primitives inside of ZBrush that are appended with this 3D are going to contain an initialized menu. So selecting the spiral 3D here and then navigating back to the tool palette, down here in the initialize tab, if I open this up, you'll see there's a bunch of different sliders and options that will change how this design is being generated. So the first thing we wanna do is just activate this hollow option here. So we want to create a hollow mesh, so make sure that is turned on. Then I'm gonna adjust my coverage here, and you can see as I adjust this, it's going to increase the amount of spirals that are appearing on the shape. And I'm gonna set my coverage to say something around 7,000 and hit enter. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna change the start thickness and the end thickness. And I want both these thicknesses to be the same, and I also want them to be a lot smaller than 80. So I'm gonna set this to say 10, and then set the end thickness to 10 as well. And you can see now I'm getting a consistent cylinder, which is going now in this spiral shape. I wanna change my radius here. So we have a start radius and an end radius. For the end radius, I want this to be at 100. And for the start radius, I want this to be at one. So you see now I'm getting this kind of basket type effect. I have a little bit of a displacement here that's happening, so I want to remove that. So in the displacement values here for the start displacement, I wanna set this to zero. I wanna keep the twists both at zero. For my divisions here, for the little cylinder that's being wrapped around the shape here, I wanna put this as low as possible, so I'm gonna change this to three. So now I'm getting this triangulated cylinder that's now being applied in that sphere effect. And then I wanna increase my L divide here to the maximum amount. So I'm just come over here and just change that to 512. So as you can see, with just a primitive 3D object here and changing some of the options in this initialize tab, I've already created this great start for this braided carpet design. So it's taken this cylinder object here that is now three-sided and it's now spiraling it inward and giving me this shape. So now after you're happy with the manipulations you've done to the primitive 3D object, we now just need to convert this to a poly mesh 3D. So I'm gonna navigate back to the top of the tool panel here, and I'm just gonna click the Make Poly Mesh 3D button. Now after you click this button, the primitive will now be turned into a poly mesh, and now we'll be able to use the full functionality of ZBrush on this model. So as I rotate around this mesh here, and if I turn on my polyframes, you can see that the, my cylinder shape has three sides. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna remove one of these sides. So I want to get this to only have two sides and I wanna delete one of these faces. So to do this, I'm going to use the Z modeler brush. So I'm first going to rotate to the bottom of my spiral here. I'm going to go to the brush palette and open this up and I'm gonna locate the Z modeler brush and just select that. And now I want to hover over a poly I'm gonna press spacebar to go into the ZModeler poly action mode. In here, I wanna select the delete action, and I wanna then go to my target of poly loop. So this is going to allow me to hover over a poly, and then I can delete an entire poly loop based on that poly. So after I have these options selected, I'm gonna come back to my poly here. And as you'll notice, as I hover over this poly, I'm gonna get this line that's gonna be generated. And this line is showing me which way the poly loop will be deleted. So I wanna make sure that the line is going downwards like this. And after it's facing this way, if I simply click, it's going to remove that entire poly loop. Now after that, you will have to rotate your model around so you can see the rest of it here. And now instead of that three-sided cylinder, I should now only have a two-sided one. And next I wanna go through and I want to establish different poly groups on the two remaining poly loops. 
So this time I'm going to hover over an edge. I'm going to press spacebar to go in the Z Modeler Edge Action menu. And here I'm going to select the Polygroup Action. I'm going to make sure I have Polyloop selected. I'm going to hover over one of these edges and click. This is now going to assign a new polygroup to that entire polyloop. And now I should have that two-sided cylinder with a different polygroup on both sides. So I should have one polygroup here and then another polygroup here. So now that I have a two-sided cylinder and I have different polygroups applied to each of those poly loops, I can now use a frame mesh option and I can now generate a curve where these two polygroups connect. So to do this, I'm gonna navigate up to the stroke palette up here and open this up. I'm gonna open up the curve functions option here and down at the bottom we have a frame mesh button. So before you click this button, I wanna just change how the frame mesh is going to happen. So currently this is set to border, polygroups, and creased edges. So I wanna disable border, and I also wanna disable creased edges, and I wanna make sure that polygroups is the only thing that's active. So now with polygroups being active, if I click frame mesh, it's going to look at the topology of my model, and wherever there is a division of polygroups, it's going to apply a curve. So I have those two polygroups there and I have an edge that's flowing directly between those two polygroups. So when I click frame mesh, I'm going to get a curve generated between that division. So if I zoom in here, you can see now I have a dotted curve line that is going directly down that edge loop and it's spiraling all the way to the center. So I've just used that spiral 3D object that was then converted to a poly mesh 3D as a guide to generate these curves. So now that I have these curves generated, I can now select an insert mesh brush and apply that insert mesh brush to these curves. Now, any insert mesh brush can be used in this process. Since the image sent in was of a braided carpet, I have a braid brush that was created in a earlier Ask ZBrush video. So I'm gonna load that. So I'm gonna navigate over to the brush palette over here and I'm just going to load this curved braid brush. Now in the description below of this video, there'll be a link to the Ask ZBrush video on the creation of this curved braid brush. So if you'd like to generate one yourself, you can just click that link and it will show you the creation process. So now that I have this curved braid brush selected, if I just zoom in a little bit and click anywhere on one of these curves, it's going to take this braid brush and it's going to apply it to that curve. So just simply clicking here, we'll take that there and you can see that that curved braid has now been applied to that entire curve. I'm gonna turn off my polyframes here and you can see I'm now getting this effect. Now at this stage, you can change the size of this braid if you like. So I can come up here and change my draw size and then click and I'll update that braid as well. I'm gonna undo that because I like the initial size I had. You can also manipulate this curve some. So if you hover over the curve, you're going to get a different colored reticle. And as you hover over the curve, you can increase the size of this by just increasing the draw size there. And now I can manipulate the curve. So if I want it to have a little bit of an offset and not be a perfect spiral, I can just come through here and start manipulating this curve. This is going to allow me to offset this a little bit. So I'm just playing with the curve that's generated. So just shifting it some. And this will allow me to come through and make some design changes here. You can also now just convert this from the curve to true geometry and then use the move brush as well. So to do this, I can go back up to the stroke palette up here and go to that curve function area and I can click delete. And this will now transfer that curve to geometry. Now I can come and select say the move brush and now come through and start manipulating that unmasked area of that carpet there. Now the curve portion of the carpet here is still sitting on top of my initial primitive shape. So I want to just split the unmasked portions of this mesh off to a new subtool. So I'm gonna to go to the tool palette over here. I'm gonna open up the subtool area. I'm gonna to navigate to the split area and I'm just gonna click split unmasked points. This is gonna take the unmasked portions of the mesh and generate a new subtool from those. So by clicking this, you can see now I have my original primitive shape and then just the rug itself. So now I'm just going to hide everything but the rug. So I'm gonna hold shift and click on the eyeball icon and that's now only going to give me the rug shape here. The rug is looking a little bit tessellated right now because of the low poly nature of that curve brush. So I'm gonna to navigate to the geometry panel here and I'm just gonna activate dynamic subdivisions. Let's go to geometry, open up the dynamic subdivision area and then I'm gonna activate dynamic. This is now gonna apply some smoothing to that rug there. 
Now I can continue using the move brush here to manipulate this around. I can also use the inflate brush to decrease or increase the thickness of the braid as well. So I'm come back over to the brush palette over here. I'm going to now select the inflate brush. Now if you hold alt and inflate, it's going to thin out that braid. And if you release alt and just apply the inflate there, it's going to make it thicker. So you can use this to come through and start changing the designs of your braid as well. So just to add a little more random nature to the surface there. You can also use any of the other brushes inside a ZBrush to manipulate this design. You can even come through and use, say, the smooth brush. So you can just tailor how this carpet is going to look. So using these processes and just using that simple IMM brush, we've now created a braided carpet. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.